This is Barbara Reese reporting for This Week in East Brunswick. We're very fortunate today to be with two representatives of the New Jersey Folk Festival. We have Elizabeth Graham, Public Relations Coordinator, and Lada Abdesheva, Folk Festival Manager. Welcome. Oh, thank, thank you. you. So tell us, Elizabeth, I understand that bluegrass is the theme for this year. Yes, absolutely. Um, our director, Dr. Angus Gillespie, uh, decided to choose this theme this year because it's just such a rich cultural heritage. Uh, it derives from English, Irish, and Scottish immigrants who uh, migrated to Appalachia and then created this musical style that has heavy um, influences from ballads, but also African-American blues and ragtime, and just really came out on its own as a genre. So it's really just incredible. Um, this year we have so many amazing performers coming. We have uh, Dan O'Day and Eagle Ride, who's a heavily bluegrass influenced band. Uh, we have Spook Handy, who is a Pete Seeger protege. And we also have Barry Mitterhoff, who, Mitterhoff, who is a uh, mandolin savant. It's really great, yeah. It's a wide array of performances. Absolutely. And you're gonna tell us more, Lana. Yeah, um, there's several stages at the Folk Festival and they're all like very awesome but um, we have one really awesome performer for children and families coming and his name is Brady Wagner he's a clown and everybody loves him he breathes fire he walks on stilts he's really awesome we have a step team coming to the gateway stage we have a shore stage which highlights the SSS competition which is the singer-songwriter showcase and that's more contemporary folk music, which a lot of younger crowds like, especially Rutgers students. Mm -hmm. Also, we have jam sessions right by the shore stage where um, there's bluegrass, old-timey Irish session jams going on, and everybody can join in. Everybody is encouraged to bring their instruments and play along with the musicians and performers, so it's a really nice time. Um, Skyland stage has a lot of really cool people coming. Um, most of them are the ones that Elizabeth just mentioned, so it'll be great. And I know you have tons of arts and crafts. Yep. Uh, tell us a little bit about some of the perform. You, know, you have dance, you have food vendors, you have children's activities. A lot of someone's coming with the family. Is there something for everybody? Yeah, definitely. There's a bunch of food vendors. Um, they have great food. Um, they have a heritage area where there's just a lot of different cultures being represented very well. There is a children's tent with so many activities. We have pony vendors, we have a pie eating contest, we have a bunch of crafts for the children to do. It's just a great place to be for the family. I mean I've gone many years. Each, each year it's more fun than the year before. Uh, it, now for someone who's never been to the festival they may not realize that it's entirely run by students. Mm -hmm. yep. Could you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah. There's 15 student coordinators and we, we obviously we have like a board of adults and we have a director and an associate director but the people that actually like put in the work like to keep it going and have it happen are the students and they're all Rutgers students and yeah, yeah we work really hard. So basically how our class runs it's that um, the first half of class, we learn about folk culture and we learn about the theme for the festival this year. And then the second half is a business meeting where everybody discusses what their job was that week and how we've been working to just make the folk festival happen. And then we do breakout sessions to uh, make sure everything's on track. So it's great. Yep. So how's the experience been for you ladies doing and running this whole festival? Well, this is my third year doing it. Um, my first year I was shore stage coordinator. Second year I was Skyland stage coordinator, which was the main stage, and now I'm folk festival manager. So it's been like really a really nice experience, which is why I've come back every year, and I'm really gonna miss it when I graduate this semester. So, yeah. so it's been it's a been memorable great. experience for you. Mm -hmm. This is actually my first year doing folk fest. I'm a sophomore at Rutgers, and it's it's been amazing so far. The staff is just full of really incredible people who just make you feel at home, and then it's just unlike anything else having this trust put in you to like do actual adult work when you're a student and it just it's an opportunity unlike any other. And it's been around for 42 years and I think you were telling me earlier that it's uh, the longest running student run folk festival. Did I get that right? Yeah absolutely. Mm -hmm. And it's the only student run folk festival in the country. Wow. 
So okay. we're very fortunate. We have Rutgers right here. We have Dr. Gillespie who runs so many beautiful programs. Mm -hmm. And we learn so much about our state and about our culture. So it's really, I think, a wonderful opportunity uh, for Absolutely. everybody to Absolutely. join in. So tell us a little bit about the particulars, the date, the time, the cost. Um, there's no fee. You can bring your whole family, just walk in. It's on Saturday, April 30th, and it's from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., rain or shine. And which campus is it on? Okay. Douglas Campus. It's Douglas on campus. Eagleton Woodlawn. Oh, excellent. So it's right here, running close by, and there's food for the family, and there's uh, definitely things to buy for the kids and for everybody. Oh, yeah. A lot so of crafts. A lot of crafts. I've mm -hmm. bought many crafts for my daughter there. And, and things to do, too. There are actual demonstrations. I've seen some lovely demonstrations mm -hmm. of all kinds of crafts at the fair. Yep. So it's, uh, I'm looking forward to it myself. And uh, for those for people who have never been to the festival, tell us why they should come. You learn a lot. It's, it's, it's very, very awesome. It's, I, me, myself, working for the festival I've learned a lot about so many different cultures not just New Jersey not just the theme not just bluegrass but like for example we have performers from dancers actually from various countries we have Japanese dancers that are possibly coming just very cool experiences and for me I think I would say that it's the music experiencing live music is just unlike anything else and so to get that experience for free just take that opportunity whenever you can. Yep. I, I'm looking forward, and I hope our viewers will take advantage of this wonderful opportunity. So just to wrap it up, let's review one more time the date, the time, the, and that it's free. So it's April 30th, is that yep. correct? Mm -hmm. Yep, last Saturday of April. And 10 yeah. to 6. 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Yeah. Also, if you have any questions, or if anybody watching has any questions, please refer to our website or our Twitter or Instagram accounts, anything, or our phone number, which is the RU Info number. So you have lots of ways for people to reach yep. out to you. Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. Well, thank you, uh, ladies, for what you're doing and for the students of Rutgers and Dr. Gillespie for another wonderful year. We look forward, and thank you for all the hard work you do. Thank you thank for having you. us. And this is Barbara Reese reporting for This Week in East Brunswick. Hope to see you at the festival.